Hey guys, Dr. Gooden here to show you how to calculate the standard error of the mean. I'm Dr. Jacob Gooden, professor of kinesiology at Point Loma Nazarene University. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate the standard error of the mean in Excel. Now I've talked about the standard error of the mean in previous videos, and it's important if you want to estimate the mean of a population from a sample of data that you have gathered. Usually in statistics or in sports science, we cannot measure the entire population that we are interested in. And so we take a smaller sample of that. We can measure a variety of traits and then we calculate means. But in order to account for sampling error, we have to calculate this statistic. So it's called the standard error of the mean and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now you can download this Excel file from the description below to follow along. Okay, here we are inside of the data set, and we've actually used this data set before. It is a collection of squat one repetition maximums in kilograms. Let's see how many we have. We have a thousand measurements. Okay, so a thousand people squatted as much as they could. This data is roughly normally distributed. Now, this is fairly simple to calculate the standard error of the mean. We have to start with the standard deviation, and in this case, we will use the ST dev.s function because this is coming from a sample. So I'll type in equals stdev.s, open parentheses, and, and I will grab all these numbers by clicking on the top number, holding command shift and pressing the down arrow key. And then I'll close the parentheses and hit enter. And that gives me a standard deviation of 29.9. Now the calculation for the standard error of the mean is just the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size, so over the total number of measurements that you've gathered in your data set. So to do that in Excel, we can type equals, and we'll grab the standard deviation right here, divided by sqrt, which is the square root, of the count, which will count all of the non-blank cells in a group of cells. So I'll grab that whole array. Oops, and I need two parentheses there. So take a look again. So it's grabbing the standard deviation, then the square root of the number in the sample. And we've hit enter. And so in this case, the standard error of the mean is 0 0.9, it uh, looks like 0 0.95 if we round it. Let's go ahead and round these. There we go. Now I have the standard error of the mean, but what does that actually mean? So the standard deviation is a measure of the overall spread of the data. It's how, how this data is dispersed away from the mean. The standard error of the mean is how much error there is due to sampling error, random sampling error, in our estimation of the mean. Because remember, this is just the sample, it's not the entire population of data. And so what we can do actually is we can use the standard error of the mean to calculate a 95% confidence interval around the mean. And what that 95% confidence interval is, is it gives you the ability to say that you are 95% sure that the true mean falls between these two limits, the upper limit and the lower limit. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So we know that according to the Z table, we need to use 1.96 as the multiplier because that's how many standard deviations above and below the mean would contain 95% of the data in a normally distributed data set. So I'm going to type in equals the average of our data set, so A2 to A1001 plus 1.96 times the standard error of the mean. I'll hit enter and I'll actually copy that and paste it below. And I will change this plus sign to a minus sign. Okay, so now we have the mean plus the standard error of the mean times 1.96 and the mean minus 
1.96 times the standard error of the mean. Okay, so now that we have our standard error of the mean and our 95% confidence interval, we want to graph that. Now, it will be a simple column or bar graph, but we will add the error bars as a nice finishing touch. So we'll type in a label and we'll grab that mean again. And put the standard error of the mean right underneath it. Okay, so I'll just highlight these two cells, go to insert, column graph, and now on a Mac, this will be a little bit different than a Windows computer, I believe. But on a Mac, what we want to do is actually click add chart element and error bars. Now it gives you some standard options. We can do standard error or a percentage or a standard deviation, but we actually want to use the standard error of the mean that we calculated. So we'll go down to custom and I will specify a value. And so for the positive error value, we will just click on the standard error of the mean there. And then for the negative, we'll do actually the same thing because it will subtract that. So we use the same cell for both and I click OK. And there we go. I'm going to actually adjust this because it looks like that error is huge. That's just because the Y axis starts at 98. I'm going to double click that. And put the minimum at zero. Ooh, and now it's nice and tiny. A little bit hard to see. Okay, but you can see how small that standard error is. And that's mostly because we have such a large sample size. Remember that the larger your sample, the smaller your standard error will be. And that's because the sample size is on the bottom of that fraction. So it's on the denominator. And because a larger sample makes for a smaller number, then you have a smaller error of the mean. Now we used a 95% confidence interval, but you could also use a 90% confidence interval or a, even a 99% confidence interval. It's up to you as the researcher or as the sports scientist. Just remember that the wider you make those confidence intervals, the less precision that you have in your estimate. And the more narrow that you get with those confidence intervals, the more likely you are to make an error. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you had any questions, let me know down in the comments below. If you wanna check out a playlist with other Excel and SPSS and statistics tutorials, click on the link that pops up somewhere on the screen. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. So we just have a Gosh.